Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at Nodebox. Okay, so let's take a look at this project. I think this one's a pretty good one to start with. It kind of shows a bunch of the little features that Nodebox has. So Nodebox is a node-based animation program. It's really good for like data viz. It's kind of like a Houdini light, basically. It's like a 2D Houdini or maybe 2D. But it's pretty awesome, it's free. I urge you to check it out. And if we come down to our transport controls down here, you can see we have our frame number, play and rewind, and we hit play. You can see that this is basically a polygon that's built around the outer perimeter of this circle with some numbers that follow the nodes of the polygon. So let's stop. I'm gonna double click on here, set this back to one. For some reason, node box starts at one, not zero like other things, but you can double click and start at zero if you want to. There's a couple of interesting quirks in the node box interface that are kind of like that. For example, sometimes if you double click really fast, it'll work, sometimes it won't. So you might have to vary your click speed up a little bit, or that apparently you can also click and play while that's on there. That's interesting. Just set that to zero. These will let you go frame by frame. They're kind of finicky for the first click for some reason. Don't know why, but whatever. This program is free and it's still awesome. So don't worry too much about that. Another odd thing I wanna show you before we get started is if you want to change this bounds, which you can turn on and off here, which is basically your frame size, you go up into File and Document Properties, and for some reason, height comes before width, and it's only like that in here. All of the nodes are width before height, like pretty much anything else. So just keep that in mind. To change these, you also have to double click on them. And for some reason, sometimes it won't take unless you tab to the next one. So when you're done with this one, make sure you tab to the next one. And then you just hit Save, and you're good. So let's look over here at our network. We zoom in and see I have some other ones out here. As always, I have this project file available on our website for a dollar. It has a bunch of different other things in there that I'm not showing that are kind of different variations on this theme. So if you really want to deep dive into any of it, check that out. So let's zoom in. Just do that with your mouse scroll wheel like normal. And you can use spacebar to pan around in all of these views. If we click on any of these things like this, you can see that our options are brought up here in kind of like an attribute or metadata editor over here. And if at any time you want to see the data of one of these things, like say we're on this ellipse, for example, you can click over here and it'll tell you there's one path for the ellipse. Or if we double click on divide over here, you can see we actually have the data itself. Frame number would have frame number, which in this case is zero, but if we up to one, it'll be one. So this is pretty handy because you can see if you're passing the right stuff through your nodes. It's kind of a good way to like bug check. And speaking of that, you want to think of this like a programmer. Every node is basically like a function and it has an input and an output. So it takes some input, it does something to it, and then it gives you an output. So let's go back to our viewer here, and we'll click back on this combine just so we can see everything at once. We'll zoom out and kind of move this over with spacebar, and you can see what we got. So everything in this is driven by the frames. All of the animation is driven by this frame node, and this just updates with the frame number. That's basically how all animation is handled in Nodebox. And down here at our last node, this combine, we're basically putting together a couple of blocks, a couple of different elements. So we have this box thing, which is basically the square around each one of these nodes that's selected. Then we have this connect node, which basically draws a line between points. And that's what's making our polygon. Then we have all of the rectangles that represent our circle. And then all of this stuff over here is our numbers. So let's take a look at the center section because that's kind of the basis of this entire thing. As you can see here, we're kind of branching out a couple of different things from that center section. So we're starting off up here with an ellipse. It's pretty basic. It's width and height or 1600. I don't have anything piping in, so nothing is controlling the width and height, but the node itself and what I've entered. If you wanted to, you can move this over, and I believe that should change everything. If we get down here, it'll just move everything. Generally, if you wanted to move everything like that, you would just put a translate node at the end. So let's go back up here. Let's set this back to zero. Oh, and that reminds me, there is one bug that's very interesting that I ran into on the Nodebox forums. If you take this, you can drag any of these nodes with an option or alt click and oh, you gotta do it first. Hold that, move it over. Now, this looks like you're editing the metadata for this node, but if you edit this, even though this shows selected, it'll change this node. So if I move this over, for example, you'll see that this is the node that we're showing. Anything with this triangle in, this is basically the output that we're seeing in our window over here. So even though we thought I moved this one, this one moved instead. So if you happen to do any of that, just be careful because it can really mess up a network before you even notice anything has happened. Let me delete that one, and let's continue. So this ellipse is not showing up at all in here, obviously. 
So we don't have any of this filled in stuff. And that's because this next note is resample. You gotta be careful sometimes that zoom is touchy on this. So you can see I've set this to use by amount, and that means it's gonna take this points value and it's gonna ignore this length value. So I have 60 points. So now the data that I'm passing through here is basically point data. Although it is geometry still, but I'm feeding that into a point node so I get actual points. For some reason this zooms and does all sorts of weird stuff whenever you click on them, I don't know why. So I kinda like to keep the bounds checked so you can kinda still see where we are. I don't know why it does that, I wish it didn't, but again, free, beggars can't be choosers, this thing is still awesome. So now if we go into our data over here, you can see we actually have point data. So then we're gonna be using this point data in a bunch of different things, but first thing first, rectangles. We're building rectangles with that to represent each one of these possible node points. So it's just a seven by seven rectangle, and that passes into our combined node so that we can show more than one thing. If we were to look at the data for this section, it would just be a bunch of paths. So if you need any of that point data, you have to get it from the point node before that. So from there, we have to decide which points we're gonna to use to build our polygon. So you can see here from this point data that we have, I'm passing those into this pick node over here and this pick node over here. And these pick nodes take lists. And a list is basically just like an array of data. So in this case, if we click on this pick over here, you can see we have data that matches somewhat with our original points, but we don't have all of the same points. We don't have 60 of them in here. And that's because I'm only looking for five. So this pick is set to five. This pick is also set to five. So on each side of this, I'm picking five different points. Pick also has this seed, as you can see, and it says connected, and that's because these both point to this divide null, and this divide null is from this frame number. So if you look on these things, you can see what they take, and so this seed takes an integer. That means it's basically gonna ignore any kind of float data. So if you give it like a number like 1.2, it's only gonna see the one, the integer. There's also int nodes like down here, so you can force it if you need to. But in this case, it's just gonna chop off the decimal point, and that's all we really need. So by dividing the frame by 100, that means that this pick is only gonna change every 100 frames. And I have that same thing pointed into here, as over here, into this other pick, which means that the seed for each of these is gonna be the same, which means that they're gonna pick the same points. So let's keep going with this side for now. This is gonna build two different parts. If I click this back on, you can see I have this outlined box around it. And initially I built these in a completely different way, but there's one node that will actually let you do a stroke like that, and I will show you that in a moment. So you can see from this pick node, I'm passing data into this box and into this other section over here. And those are both getting passed into our combine. So let's take a look at this box thing. This is a subnetwork I built. So let's jump in here by choosing edit children, and we can see this subnetwork. You can see that these connect over here to this corner. That means that these inputs are available outside of this node network. They call that publishing. If you just right click on here, you can hit publish, and that'll end up being something that you can change outside your subnetwork. So all I'm taking into here is this rect. I have the position, the width, and the height published outside so those can be changed so that we can move it and change its size if we need to. And in this colorize, you see I have fill here. If we click on this, you can turn alpha down to zero to make sure there's no fill. And then you can set a stroke width. So if we want to make that thicker, we could. So you can see it changing down there, down here. I'm going to leave it on one, but you can make it whatever you want. One thing to know about subnetworks is that whichever node is selected will be the last one that's output. So if I change this to this rect, you can see that that will just fill in. So that means we're skipping that colorized step, so we're not getting a stroke anymore. So if you change something in a subnetwork and you've been previewing different things, make sure that you have the correct node selected at the end, so you get the correct output. So we're gonna right click and go up. And if you wanna make one of these subnetworks, you can just basically select a bunch of things, right click and hit group into network. And then it lets you give it a name, and you just go through, build your stuff and publish points, and then you have your own little node set. If you're so inclined, you can actually build your own nodes. You can use Python, and I believe you can also use Java and Clojure. For example, there's not a great noise in here, but somebody's actually built Perlin noise as their own node that you can actually download. So the possibilities to do anything in here are kind of infinite. So that's basically it on how we built this extra box. You can see in here, I've just defined it to have a different width and height. But that can all be controlled with another node. You just make like a number up here. And to do that easily, you just double click and tell it like number. Oops number, spell correctly. And you can just drag this output into one of these inputs and you can see that now if I actually click this, it's gonna basically disappear. So it's just a line now. It has no width anymore. And that's because I've changed this. I can actually go back in here and drag this out if I want to. I can pipe this back into here. 
You can see that now we have a super big box around it. You can tie this into other rectangles if you wanted to, like put it into here. And you can see we have a bunch of big lines on everything. But I'm going to delete that because we don't need that. But that's to just show you how easy it is to connect different elements together. Eventually, I'll probably show you guys how to build resizable elements by building kind of a relationship between different elements in one of these sub networks. So getting back to this, if we go back to our pick, you can then see we use this thing called sort. And that's basically how we set up this polygon. So if I disconnect this and I disconnect that, and we just drag this into here, you can see that I get this weird funky connection. It's not a polygon anymore, at least not one that you would really want to look at. So let me undo that and let's take a look at this sort. This sort takes a list and it sorts the points by some criteria. So in here you can see we have this order by drop down menu. There's either no change, which is a way I could have shown you how that worked. Or we have an X, so they can sort by their X position. We can sort by their Y position, which also looks kind of interesting. We can sort by distance to point. In this case, it's zero, zero, which in Nodebox is actually the center of the comp, unlike After Effects, which would be the top left corner. In our case, we're going to sort by the angle to point. So this is going to make sure that we're going to check the angle around this thing. So we actually build a polygon that doesn't cross itself. And then all we're going to do is throw that into this connect node. We have it checked to close, which is the default which will make a complete polygon. So all that's left is this side over here. So there's a kind of a couple of funky connections in here, but let's start over here at the scale. So you can see scale leads back to this point data that we have, and if, to refresh you, that's the points around the edge of the circle. So you can see here what we're scaling by is 105. I've moved the origin because I want all of these numbers to basically fall on the outside of the circle, and ended up just playing with that until I got them to actually kind of fit kind of nicely around it. I did that part after it was built and just kind of moved them. So you can see it moves all of the numbers around the edge of the circle. So that basically scales all of these points all the way out around it. And I don't know if it'll show that one if I do it. It might. It's kind of hard to see because you can't see two at once. But you can see where that circle moves. So all of the numbers would display from these points. So that gets passed into a pick node again, just like on the other side. And we get five of those points that we're going to attach a number to that pick node gets pushed into the position parameter of this text path. This text path is set to Blender Pro for the font. Font size is 24, but we're aligning it to the left. That's the important part. By default, I believe this is centered. After that, we have a translate, and that's to make sure that basically the number itself is moved off from the point a little bit, and it centers up vertically. And from there, it's pushed into the combine. So the rest of the text path is the actual text that it gets. And for that, we're going to go all the way back up to frame. Frame is getting pumped into this add node on one side, and then the other side of the add is connected to this random number. So basically, we're going to generate five random numbers from 0 to 100, and the seed I just left is 0. And to that, we're going to add the frame number. So we're going to have five numbers. They're random, and randoms in node box don't change unless you update the seed. It doesn't change on every frame, like in After Effects, unless you use timeless or whatever. So we're going to take five random numbers into that add the frame number. So they're all going to increment by one every frame, but they're going to start off randomly. These would be float numbers at this point, but I only wanted integers. So I pass that data into an integer null. So if we double click on this add null, which actually will still show you the data since there's no real output geometry for that. But I'm just going to click data just so it's a little easier to see. And you can see these are our numbers that we start with and they all have a decimal point. So I took that data, I passed it into an integer. And if we double click on this, you can see that basically just strips off all the decimals. That's pushed into text path as the text itself. And that's what gives us our numbers that are then combined into the end for these. And that's it for the setup of this. So if you want to export, you just go to file and you either use export range or export movie. For some reason, the format choices here are a little weak. You basically have MP4 and then just a bunch of different Android and cell phone and WebM and all that kind of junk. So if you really want to work with this, you probably want to export with a range. One of the great things about Nodebox is that it's all vector based. So you can even output vector stuff if you want to. So you can export SVG, PDF, or PNG. Pretty much if you're going into After Effects, you're going to probably want to do PNG. You can do a whole weird SVG workaround thing using Animate, but it's very not user friendly. So I would avoid that unless you really know what you're doing or you bumbled through it like I did. Anyway, that's pretty much it. We're going to do some more Nodebox tutorials in the future because it's useful for building little UI elements that you can bring into your After Effects compositions. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week, even though this one was a little late. Sorry about that. Anyway, if you'd like to help support us, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week.
Bye. Bye.